I don't True. like other people's kids. <laughs> so I don't want to be around strangers, heathens. Some some parents don't know how to lock up their kids and whatever. It's fine. Like they get it at four lock years old. Lock up their kids. Meaning like. Give a disclaimer here before anyone <laughs> thinks you're about to be an abusive whatever. parent. Whatever. I get it though. Like I, I'm not a parent yet, but like I can only imagine. I'm going to eat my words <laughs> in a few months slash years. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome back, back to Give It To Me Straight. Straight. I'm Alex. And I'm John. And we're your gracious, 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 gracious host. host. Happy summer. Now it's officially Memorial Day. It passed. It was yesterday, technically, when this episode comes out. Monday. Really? What everyone do, yeah. I was about to say, is it actually summertime? I think like Memorial Day is generally like the, start, the of it. start of summer. Technically, there's a date. Is it June? I don't know. You know? I'll just like go off of Memorial Solstice. Day because that's when the public pools open up. And the beaches here. Oh, sure. You know how like there's no guards at any of the beaches yet? Mm. That's like the crazy thing, the difference between New York and California. All the beaches in California are public. Here, they're private. They're private. You got to pay. Kind of, I think that's kind of bullshit. I agree. Like you owning the beach. like. Well, and yeah. then you have to pay for parking everywhere you go. Whatever. It's fine. I mean, it is what it is. I'm sure there's... It's like $20 parking. Yeah. It's kind of ridiculous. What? Or a guard who's like, do you live in this area? You're not allowed in. <laughs> I want to be like, do you? <laughs> Which I probably, you probably don't. Well, whatever. It's so happy Memorial Day. What did everyone do? Oh, God. What did everyone do? Or you're just talking to me. Uh, I feel like dog shit. Let's see. Uh, gotta love Disney. Got sick from Disney. What? Your so brother's did, sick. Yeah. Oh, his, so did my whole brother's family, except for... Alyssa, my sister-in-law, and I'm wondering, because I didn't get sick either. Is he it said because... she was sick, I thought. No, she, I mean, the kids got sick and Dan got oh. sick. She, I think she got a little cold, but not as bad as the everyone else. But I wonder if it's because we're just overdoing it on vitamins. Like overdosed on your prenatals. And just all the other vitamins that we have to take. So yeah, I'm like, I've been fine. I feel great. I want this like f sickness to shit or get off the pot. You know, I was sick. And I sweated it out. I like put sweatshirt on everything. I just dump sweat everywhere at night. And then I felt great the next day and I worked out. Worst decision ever because now I feel like shit again. I'm on and off. I don't know. Yeah. It just needs to like, it needs to fucking pass. You just need one day of doing nothing. But you know when you're not going to get today. that chance is when we have a baby here. Hashtag no days off. I kept thinking that. I'm like, oh my God, what are we going to do? I know. When the kid's sick. You just have to push through. Just drop them off at your mom's That's house. That's why I think parents also drink less because they can't afford to be hungover. I know. What you, you can't like, be inebriated. You, inebriated. <laughs> inebriated. You'd be, nibbity, you'd be so fucked. Yeah. Liberty, liberty. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's almost like you'd have to get a babysitter for both the night of and the morning, the next morning, if you really want to enjoy yourself. But I don't know if I would want to burn a babysitter on that. What do you mean? What else would you burn? A, what else is a babysitter for? Like vacation. Oh, well, that's like a different... A babysitter is not for vacation. What's that's your like, thoughts on bringing a babysitter on a vacation? 100% would do it. I don't know. If we, can, if we could swing it, would I've do it. I've heard horror stories of like bringing a young babysitter on a trip. Well, like, obviously you... Inter you know them well enough, but you're not just bringing a stranger. Like I'd bring a grandparent. On a trip. Well, yeah, again, but that's also, I feel, I would feel more bad making a grandparent watch our kid, like while we go and have fun than if we someone who we're not paying. Not if we pay them. We'll pay, your, we'll pay the grandparents. Whatever. We'll cross we'll that bridge when we get there. <laughs> I just think, again, you're not going to bring a stranger on a trip with you. You vet them and you know them and you're, and you're technically not alone. It's like, okay, stay in the hotel room with kid while right. we go. And Kobe, we don't, we don't stay like past he's nine like anyway. Up my ass right now. Kobe? Yeah. He's so cute. He's a good boy. He's not a good boy. He just keeps destroy getting his feet in all the mud. I know. What else? Watching some Vanderpump lately. <laughs> I just I just wanted to catch you have, up. And yeah. then I got sucked into it. <laughs> Alex wanted to like put this table together and forty five minutes into it, Alex is seventy five percent of the table done. And I was like, what happened? Because I was watching Vanderpump. <laughs> You're, the thing about you get Vander, in on the drama. The thing about Vanderpump is like I see all these people on there. I'm like, I can do that. Would you want to do that though? If they pay me, I, 
Mike, the situation was talking about it on some podcast and he was saying how he was pulling in like six seventy five a million for the season. Hell yeah. To stir the pot, start some drama. Fuck. Yeah. You want to do that? No, no. Cause really? I, you don't get creative control over the edit that they're going to put out for you. Oh, I don't have creative control of like, anything we do. You have to create drama. Like no problem. <sighs> No, it's just too invasive. You already don't like having people at our house to do things like and that's the drama. last thing that you would want is a camera crew up your ass. You'd be like, <laughs> leave me alone. You would hate it. Wouldn't be at our house. We'd be at like you barely some beach house. <laughs> like this is enough for you. <laughs> this is not for you. You're saying like doing Summer House something, or something. Yeah, there is. A, I've never watched that show, Summer House. The thing but... is, I don't want to share my bedroom with anyone else. Like I need some. Like a little space, and there better be enough bathrooms. That's the only thing I care about. Everything else, cool. But like, I'll I don't give want you people the rundown waiting. of what this show would look like right now. John would not be in it because you'd be in the bathroom the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Drama, I'm in the yeah. toilet. <laughs> John's like, what? Catch me up. What's going on? Yeah, I've been I keep, shitting. I keep missing it. Exactly. I'm like, it just, it's good in theory for you, but it just wouldn't work out. You get fired season one. They'd be like, we don't even know who John is. <laughs> I think. Honestly, I think people would love to see all the bullshit drama we go through. What is it? Kobe getting his paws Us in the mud? moving, getting him on the plane, missing our flights, car getting totaled. They'd Everything like, we do in our life. It's always something. Yeah. I had black hair before I met you. <laughs> that is not true. Yes. When I met you, you were already going gray at 29. What would our show be called? It wouldn't give it to me straight. This is it. Oh, that's like, a good idea. This is our no, show. I don't want to revolt on the podcast because basically it's great. You don't really have to do anything. You just live your life and they film drama. I guess to it's me. It's like such minimum effort. No, that that sounds like my nightmare. I would way <clears throat> rather shoot a film, a feature film, than be on a reality show. Okay, right sure. One. Sure, that's a big lift though. You also like want creative control and all that. Like, I don't care. I don't have creative control in our own videos today. I also like today. watching reality. I don't like being reality. Like, we don't even do vlogs. We do skits. So if this is like, but if vlogging, you, like, we have to shoot it. We have. Yeah, but to then you still have the final say of the edit. Like, if you are interested in being a reality star, John, maybe you should try vlogging first. Then get why they're like, not shooting it though? I, yeah, but they're just they're just there. It's like you're you'll creating forget, your own reality show though. You'll forget the cameras are there. I'll be eating. I'm like, oh, the, I fart. I'm like, oh, the cameras are. I forgot. So why don't you just hire someone to film you all day and then make That's your own reality no, show? No, I want to be like, I want to be like with a crew on MTV. Who watches MTV? Oh, not like the Challenger or any of the or road rules because that's too dangerous. I just like I feel like you're only wanting to do this so bad because I'm telling you like all the reasons why it's not a good idea. <laughs> like you would hate it. Listen, I know you so well. You would hate it. All they do in Vanderpump is drink, hang out, and stir up drama between each other. It's great. Then go back to LA and join the <laughs> cast of Vanderpump, John. <laughs> like you could do that. Try out, be a server the there. The thing is, like, it's just no lift. It would be no lift. You say that. I think it's a lot of work. You have to be available. Oh, no. I have to get ready and go to Top Golf. Oh, no. What was the other thing they did? Oh, no. I have to. They did something cool. Oh, Tom uh, Sandoval. They, play, they went and played fucking paintball. I was like, fuck. I would have loved the to play paintball. The only reason why you want to do this <laughs> is because they paid, played paintball. You can do that. Number one, we just had an episode about how you don't want to work. Like, if someone's <laughs> telling you to be somewhere at a certain time, you'd be like, I want to go on my own time. Like, you Are they picking me up? This. You would hate Are it. they picking me up? No, you're, I'm there. you're driving there. First off, I am the most dependable person ever. I'm even early. I'm over this conversation. I'm early for anything we have to do. <laughs> John, you know what? Live out your dreams. Go I'm not prepared. Go do it. <laughs> not prepared. If anyone has reality show connects, John is your next Tom Sandoval. But nothing like... Oh, no, God. <laughs> He's going to start painting his nails. <laughs> no. And you're going to start a band, John. This is so exciting for you. Oh, I can't start a band. <laughs> mm. What would that be called? <laughs> the Boof Nasties. Oh <laughs> I can't. Is this really your dream? I just think I could do it, you know? You could do a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, but... This one's an easy one to do. You think, I think you think it's easy, but I'm sure it's a lot of, you have to go through to all these like interview, post show interviews. You have to be available. When we had our you live, not, listen, whoa, whoa, whoa. When we had our live show, I hated doing the live show. 
I love the meet but and greet. But it's not your own schedule. Like for a few weeks, like again, I'm sure <clears throat> it's it's a different type of job than what a normal person would work like in terms of flexibility. But knowing you, you still wouldn't like it because it's still work. Like the idea of it sounds fun for you now, but you would have no control over your schedule. I for watched Mike's situation. All he does is order food all day at restaurants. I'm like, this looks awesome. I just think, but what you food. see, it's like how people don't really know what we do. You know, they're like, all you do is shoot videos every day and post them on the internet. It's like, you don't know the behind the scenes. I, I'm not of saying involved. it's not work. I'm just saying, I think we have a better idea of what it is than most people. And that's it's why better, I, it's better than this. We got to set up all our own cameras. We got to like do a do do boop 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 with the to. computers. We can outsource it with an MTV, network. all you do is show up. That's what you think. Okay, John. I mean, but again, I'm not here to stop you from getting it. I don't, I'm not going to get in the way of your dreams. I want to throw a disclaimer out there, though. I'm not saying I want to do anything like road rules or the challenge or anything like that because that stuff looks dangerous. Beggars can't be choosers, John. The, the, like Survivor, I wouldn't make it. And those all, that shit looks dangerous. So you just want to be on a party show? Probably, yeah. Are you having like a midlife crisis? But Mike, the situation, he's not partying anymore. You're about to be a dad. John. All he's doing is eating. He's got three kids. <laughs> Half the half those people have kids. Then do it. Like go and do it. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it for you. You would do it with me. Fuck no. We do everything together. No, you would go do it by yourself. <sighs> I like we have different interests and that's okay. We talk about me time. That would be your me time, and I'd be like writing scripts with I'd Martin make sure Scorsese. They, I'd make sure they put you in there. <laughs> I'll make no. sure they put you in the reality show. Just like you better make sure you put me in your feature film when you win an Oscar. You have to audition though. I'm not just gonna put you in. That's it. such bullshit. Yeah, if you suck, I'm not putting you in my film. I was in the last one, and you did okay. <laughs> <laughs> we only Speaking got into of two which, film festivals. We got into two film festivals. We're waiting on one more, which we probably won't, we won't get, get into. into. Honestly, John, I'm proud of us for getting into two. Oh yeah. Some people get into none. And they do it forever. Yeah. We're the tits. We're the tits. The very humbling experience. But <laughs> listen, I'm going to one last time. Cringe. We find out if we get into the last film festival. I think it's July 12th or something. And then if we don't get into it, we could show everyone. Yeah. It. Mark your calendars. We'll release our sh our first short film. I am so proud of it. And I love it. Alex is like so sick of it. My thing is because I'm the one who wrote it. I edited it. I looked at it. I'm just like, I've watched it 10,000 times. So I'm at the point where I'm like, I've seen it. I know what I would have done differently to make it better. I wrote the ending. And I'm, I'm just over it. I wrote the ending. No, you came up with the idea. I wrote it. <laughs> I came up with the idea for the ending. <laughs> okay, perfect. John, I put she your credits. Any cred I put your credits in the fucking credits. I give you credit. It's just you and me. Exactly. You and exactly. Me. But I could have been like film just set, by me. Set design, yeah. producer, actor, cinematographer. He does it all, folks. I'm so over you. All right, let's go. Let's uh, jump into questions. Anyway, mark your calendars because, yeah, Cringe will be coming out soon. We are going to film. My goal is to do one short film a year. So even though, what? I know you're already exhausted. It doesn't have to be 15 minutes. We can make it shorter. I like 15 minutes, though. So. I know, but a five-minute short film Because it's like still... a good story, you know? I think this year, because I'm with child, I can do a five-minute one, and it'll be fine. But you technically, you only have to be in a little bit if you want to, based off the idea you want. You can get other You're people. Like, I'm going to be the star. Well, no. Right, Alex? No. Write me, no. In, and then I'll have you audition for the short film. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I'm a tree. No, I want to do something simple again, where it's just like... Us. Yeah. It makes it yeah. easier. <laughs> I mean, next year, my dream is like, I do have an idea to have like a full cast, but budget too. I'm like, I don't want to not pay people. Like you have to pay people and it's all self-funded. So it's like, how do people get their films funded? I don't know. I think it depends because if it's a passion project and people want to dip their toes in something, they'll just do it because we're, we'll show for free too. You know, no, it's I not know, like... but what I'm saying is the people in it, like we have to set a budget, you know, like we would have to, so with, that we could pay the actors, the crew, if we want to have a bigger production. Yeah. Cause what I'm saying is how do people fund their films? And then how do the people who invest in it make we, money unless we sell it? You know, some people just want to have their name on stuff. We know some people who got a bunch of like dentists <sighs> to be the producers and like, they just want to like, have their name on something as a producer. No, they also want to make money because, like, the idea is that your film gets sold. Okay. Yeah. So we almost have to like write something out really good, 
have HBO or Netflix be like, I want this. That's cool. Cause I look at it totally different. I love being part of the project. I never expect to make money off of them, but it's so cool. No, I know it's a a passion project for sure. But I think end goal is if like you want to do this as your job, right? If I want to make a feature Oscar winning film, I can't do it alone. I'm, I'm right not going to fund that myself. I'm right here. I'm going to have a $30 well, you, million first dollar off, budget. You haven't funded shit yourself. It's both of us. I'm ta- When I say myself, I'm talking about us as a unit. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's jump into questions. You're really annoying <laughs> me. Go join your reality show, John. And then you could... What? What is a reality show winner awards? Emmys? Do they do reality shows win Emmys? I, TV? I don't know. No, it'd be cool being on something like The Office. I heard they're bringing that back. Yeah, that would be amazing. They're bringing it back. That's just like a dime a dozen, like one of those shows coming out. Amazing show. Dwight, he's my homie. I saw this girl on TikTok the other day and this, all the comments were like, this is so Dwight coded. She's like, how to get into cold lake water. And she goes, take your arm, acclimate, like or whatever, (laughs) acclimate, whatever it was. I don't remember what it was. And each arm, it was hilarious. I'm butchering it. Go find it. It's on TikTok. Anyway, should we jump into questions now? I guess, yeah, sure. All right, let's dive in. My boyfriend and I have been together for five years. I'm frustrated because every time we get into a heated argument, he starts recording me. I've never inflicted any harm on him, and I wouldn't even hurt a fly. The recording bothers me because it makes me feel less than, and he acts like he's above me. Any advice? John, any oh, sorry, advice because you want to be on a reality show? So this He, would records, be he records her when they Anytime argue? Anytime they're fighting. It's a great idea. So you could send it into MTV and that's your <laughs> tape. Look at this. Tra- look at this drama. <laughs> yeah. I'm the star in this. No, I just think our managers roll the tape. Sometimes when they get in a fight, they tap into their cameras in their house and they're like, exhibit A, okay, but you're wrong. I think for a camera that is existing in your house for security reasons, going back at is different than whipping out your phone every time you have an argument. Yeah. Tr- that's so childish. And also I'd be like, what are you trying to catch me doing? Like, is he trying to prove a point? Is he like covering his, like, you know, he can use this as like defensible evidence against you. <laughs> I don't know. Like to roll the tape. Yeah. I, that would piss me off. If you took your phone out every time we started arguing, I'd be like, are you, is, is this a reality I mean, show? It's definitely not a healthy way to, argue or debate i would say because the outcome shouldn't be to win an argument the outcome should be to resolve issues between one another my advice would be to set boundaries around your arguments like before because you put the phones in a bag no like it's inevitable that you know that you're going to get into an argument and so setting argument boundaries and being like if we get into a fight there's no reason why we need to be recording each other unless you actually feel like you're in danger. And then we have a bigger problem that we, we have to talk about. I always feel about. in danger with you. Are you secretly recording me? Yep, right now. <laughs> like, I know there's three cameras rolling your phones upside down. <laughs> it's facing you. <laughs> I think, yeah, and this is for you to just use for your, your demo reel. So I'm having hot flashes right now. Okay, next question. Feel my head. No. Do you and John ever run out of things to talk about? I know you've been together for a long time. Do you ever have awkward silence? Do you talk when you guys go out to eat? Sometimes my boyfriend doesn't, and I'm not sure how to feel about it. We've only been dating for a little over a year, and I'm not sure if this is normal. When I don't talk to John, it's because I don't want to talk to John. (laughs) (laughs) I relish the silence. No, but when we go out to eat and we're doing stuff purposefully with each other, I make a conscious effort to like engage and be focused with you. Right, like phones down. Because half the time we don't get to go do things, so when we do just the two of us, it's not work. It's like... We need to utilize that time right. That we've necessarily ever run out of things to talk about. We've always had things to talk about, but sometimes you just sit at dinner and you're tired. So it's not because we've run out of things, but like my brain needs a break. So we'll just stare at each other. Because it's after a long day mm-hmm. of us shooting or, or editing or whatever the fuck we're doing. So I think it depends. If it's at a place where you genu- genuinely are looking for things to talk about because it's not active. I wouldn't necessarily say that that's a red flag, but maybe you guys don't have a lot in common anymore or have a lot going outside of your lives. Yeah. So start doing things. Did you purposely wear a black shirt today? Cause I was wearing a black shirt. I put this on before you you did. did. I had this on Yes, I did. I put this on before you did. And like, again, John, 
Black is all that fits me right now. <laughs> okay. It was a joke because like black is a color. What? Oh, what? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Did, did we answer that? Yeah. I think it's normal, but if you feel like it's happening often, I think you have to go to the root of like why you aren't speaking. Is it because of a lack of topics or are you both just tired? I still think that's kind of concerning though, because we're together all the time. We still have stuff to talk about, but the difference is we work together. A lot of stuff we talk about is work related, oh, but it is also our passion or what we like to do. I feel like you have to be creating things to talk about with each other to keep things interesting because i saw something recently where it was like you know if you're not engaging with your partner and you just become kind of like roommates where you're just like coasting on different lives you're not asking each other about each other's day days that's kind of when you're going to drift apart is when you're not involved in, in each other's lives so there's there's always things to talk about just you got to think of them i know i feel like we i were always like checking in on each other because what well, we have to also yeah i'm like can you hurry the fuck up we have to shoot yeah like oh my god stop fucking coughing i know you're <laughs> faking it you're not really that i'm sick. i'm trying I know. To you up. have a fever i felt your head what thanks i did I oh, okay like, you're yeah. being serious like, i know you have a fever <laughs> couldn't tell if you're fucking you made around it here today i'm proud of I'm you here, yeah see i told you words of affirmation i'm here dead inside but i'm here <laughs> <laughs> i can't tell by your eyes <laughs> are they open <laughs> <laughs> next question I'm drifting apart from my childhood best friend, but they are not drifting apart from me. We've been best friends for over 20 years, but have not lived in the same city or even state for the last 10. We see each other once a year and text and call fairly often. The thing is, I'm not interested in putting any more effort into this friendship as we have grown into very different people over the years. I find her annoying. I'm never the one to initiate contact in hopes that this friendship will just fade away, but she's not getting the hint. Should I break up this friendship and tell her I don't like her anymore? It feels very high school, but it's the truth. How do you end a friendship that just won't end? What did you say? Um, silence speaks volumes or something like that? Well, when a friend is not engaging in with you, but that's after like an argument or like, you know, just difficult communication. I mean, I Your don't think you could straight strong. just be like, if she did nothing wrong, you're like, I, know. I just don't like you anymore for no reason. I, I wouldn't suggest that. I, I just don't see, unless there's some sort of fight, there's any situation in which it would be appropriate to say, hey, you're annoying. I don't want to be your friend anymore. So I think the best thing is, and these are, this is hard because I've done that before where it's just silent. You're, you're busy or like they'll get the point eventually, I hope. Like you're avoiding them kind of. It's, it's tough because is that immature to do? But friendship, friendships I, drifting I'd apart. I'd rather be immature than be mean. Yeah. I guess, but friendships drifting apart, I think is just a natural cycle of certain friendships. Like that just does happen. And it's, I would say generally mutual if you both know that like you're both kind of not putting the effort in, but I, I mean, I don't want to be like, be petty and don't answer her calls, but don't answer her calls if you don't want to. I don't know. Well, I've never gotta been be in a situation. There's got to be a third option that's like not... Like I'm more being, mature. Yeah, not being rude or I don't know, because you don't want to say you'd be like, listen, I'm just kind of like over you. Right. Cause it just it does sound rude to be like, I You know what? I'm not gonna give you other advice because I this is exactly what I've done. I'd be like, I just don't answer the phone, or I'm I say like oh, I can't, like I'm short in a text, like I can't, I'm going to my parents or whatever, you know. Hopefully. They read the room with that, but... Just like you would in a relationship. But I think friendships are different because over 20 years of being friends with someone, it's almost just like a given that you have this whole past and this timeline that you should maintain your friendships. And that's not true. Again, you grow apart from people, but not everyone, I guess, gets the hint. But you also don't have to be like open and receptive to her communicating with you. you it just sounds to petty, them... though, either way. I'm just like, oh my God, I sound like such a bitch saying that, though. Like don't answer her calls. Well, do you think she also, well, she also deserves the respect of 20 years, 20 years to just ghost someone. I don't know. And maybe it's just like, what is it? Why do you, what is it about her that you find annoying? But it just happens though. Sometimes you just develop and you grow into different people and you no longer somehow you're changing. It's been 20 years. You've changed somehow yeah. and they've changed. So, and, and I, that's okay. But, I don't know. I don't think that there's necessarily a right or wrong answer here of how to 
end a friendship. Well, I think the wrong way would be just to be like, I think you're annoying. So <laughs> yeah. don't go that route. The only route we can really give you is just slow burn. I want to leave a comment. People like post, I don't, I don't know post to in you. the comments. Yeah. yeah like how, how do you technically end a friendship where no one did anything wrong, but you're not necessarily vibing with this person anymore? Let us know. Yeah. Let us know what you guys do. Cause obviously we don't have advice. Best of luck. Best of luck. Next question. My husband's ex-girlfriend keeps trying to get back in contact with him. They dated many, many years ago and later became friends with benefits. No. They've always remained in contact until my husband met me. Recently, she's been sending him friendly messages, which he ignores, and even invited him over to her house to go swimming in her pool. Should I reach out to this bitch and tell her to fuck off? Yeah. We actually have a mutual friend, someone who we know, who... Similar situation, someone she was dating uh, broke up with him. He continuously reached out knowing that she was engaged, getting married. And then the fiance did step in and say, yo, back the fuck off. And he never reached out to her again. But I think sometimes it's necessary to do that. It, it, when I, Of course, your husband can step in and say, hey, I'm fucking married Here's my boundary. Stop. Well, he, he should. I mean, at least he did ignore her, but like he needs to be the one to make the first initial contact with her being like, you need to leave me but the fuck alone. But if he's done that already and it hasn't worked, I would step in. But if he hasn't, it's on him to create that first wall. Why don't you just block the number? How's he yeah. getting a hold of? Why did he not block the number? I don't know. With, with our mutual friend, it was coming in emails. It was coming in letters. It was like a stalking situation. Not good. But yeah, tell her to back the fuck off. But yeah. make your husband do it first. Well, there's like, if it is a stalker situation, you could end up, so do that route first of blocking off her contact information. If she's still sending letters, I'm pretty sure you can write a report on her. She's not sending letters. She's just, I don't I don't know actually how he's she's contacting her husband. But either way, your husband can do it first and then you can step in. And before we continue, this episode is sponsored by ZocDoc. Are you that one friend in the group who lives for those indulgent moments? No judgment here. We all do it. You know you're guilty of treating yourself to that extra 10-minute foot massage during your pedicure, refusing to brew your own coffee because they have a fancy cafe downstairs that just calls your name, or opting for that sweet, sweet extra legroom on your flight because, hey, vacation starts now. But if you're all about treating yourself to the top options in life, why settle when it comes to your health? Enter ZocDoc, your ultimate destination to find and book tens of thousands of top tier doctors, all backed by verified patient reviews. With ZocDoc, you've got more options than you've ever imagined. And the best part, it's absolutely free. Just head to ZocDoc.com slash give it or download the ZocDoc app today to search, compare, and book appointments with highly rated in-network doctors near you. No more waiting on hold with a receptionist. No more uncertainty. Just verified reviews from real patients and instant bookings with trusted professionals. Go ahead and treat yourself to the best healthcare experience possible. Visit ZocDoc.com slash give it and download the app for free today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash give it. ZocDoc.com slash give it. Treat yourself the right way with ZocDoc. Woohoo! Next question. My other half and I have been together for over six years and enjoy our life together. Some of his family still misspell my name in group chats. He recently corrected this behavior in the group chat and some of the family members left the chat shortly after. Is he the asshole or was he right to call it out? Just to note, I appreciate him standing up for me, but it seems like his assertiveness had a cost and he offended others in the process. Boo fucking who? <laughs> Say, spell your... Spell... Spell my wife's fucking name right. Smack. I was thinking of like, get my wife's just, name out your fucking I mouth. I can't relate with feeling offended that someone misspells my name wrong because it's been happening my whole life. My name is Alex, but my grandma, A-L-I-X, some people still call me Alice. Your some grandpa, people, Bill, was calling no, me was what? Say. What so was he calling when John me? John and I were engaged. My grandpa, we're sitting down for lunch, we're drinking wine, and five different times he called John Scott. He's like, 
Scott. It's like the one thing <laughs> your your cousin's husband has on me. He's always like, ha, huh, but at least uh, Grandpa Bill do my name, fucker. <laughs> and then he passed away thinking you were All right. Scott. All right. All right. RIP Grandpa. He was the best. But I just, you can't, uh, some people, I don't think it's a lack of love or appreciation for who you are. And maybe it is. Like, I think some people don't, don't take the time and energy to <clears throat> pronounce someone's name properly or remember. But like your dad has called Kobe the wrong names for seven years. Or, and like, I know Kobe's not a human, but like I get called wrong names from family members. No one knows how to spell my name. People don't know how to spell your name. It just get over it, it. it happens. My dad calls Alyssa Melissa still. Like there's just Kobe is Cody. <laughs> like, your dad still calls your ex-boyfriends. Exactly. On accident. <laughs> <laughs> on accident. I'm like, Jesus, Dad. But yeah, I just think yeah, I, I get that your husband just made well, a how, point. Well, how was the text? Right. Was he like, was he like, hey, you disrespect my wife. Yeah. Then he's an idiot. But if he was like, hey, just so you know, this is how you spell your name. Also, so much can be misinterpreted in a text. Mm, yeah. Because I'm pretty like, I do incomplete sentences, but I'm too lazy to write it out correctly. I'm just like, I would be like, hey, her name is Alex. <laughs> That's what I would say. Spell it out. I don't know that people leaving the group chat had to do with that unless he was rude about the message right. or like a little too forward. I don't think he was in the wrong though for calling it out. Like do it once, but you also can't get offended by people misspelling your name. I don't know. I just think that there's a lot of other issues to be concerned about. Is everyone nice? Is everyone great? Like it's, well, she, they just. I can see that being some people are like, well, it's a respect thing. Like, shut up. Yes, to to maybe pronounce it in person, but some people are terrible spellers. Again, like none of my family members. I'm I don't dyslexic. Think I've, I don't think I've gotten a birthday card in the last 30 years that I've been on this earth with my name spelled correctly from a single family member who's not like my brother or sister. How do you spell Alexandra? I'm, I'm talking about from like my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, everyone. What do they call you? Well, my family calls me Allie, so everyone spells it different. Everyone's like A L Y. Oh, so you can't get offended because that's not even your fucking name. That's my point. No one knows. No one knows what to call me. But and your actual it name, wrong. it's not like they're spelling your actual name wrong. They're spelling your nickname wrong. It's yeah, a but, that's but not the same thing. But there is a way to spell my nickname. Okay. Yeah, it's like spelling Alex, A L I X. Again, like I'm A L E X. I mean, you're shaking your head. It's not the same but thing. But it'd be like if someone... I like you how you're putting yourself technically into... Technically, your name is Jonathan, but if someone spelled you your name J-O-H-N, you call them out and you're like, that's wrong. No, I don't. Because you know how many like utility bills or all that stuff's J-O-H-N? I don't correct them. I don't care. Okay. But like, that's your nickname and people spell it wrong. Next Nick question. Nickname is... It's not John... Your full name is Jonathan. Okay, fine, whatever. So technically, your nickname is John. I go by many different names. Oof, Oof nasty. nasty. <laughs> Boofy. Daddy. JB. Zaddy. J Bone. <laughs> I'm going to throw up. Buff Daddy. Nope. Anyway, I don't think he was wrong. Alex calls me the hammer. Is, <laughs> I've never fucking called you the hammer. I'm going to throw up. Shall we move on? <clears throat> yeah. Next question. I got engaged a few months ago. However, I'm having doubts. Recently, we've been fighting about really trivial things that end up becoming big fights. We both admit that we aren't the best communicators, and I know couples fight. However, my fiance gets so worked up and emotional during our fights and says it's over and to give the ring back. He immediately regrets it within minutes, then grovels and cries. It's like a soap opera, to be honest. And he's the star in it. Oh, John, it's like the start of your reality show. I forgave him the first time because we all mess up sometimes, but now he's done this three different times. Should I take this as a warning sign and end the engagement, run for the hills? Or does this show he needs to grow on regulating his emotions and give him the opportunity to grow? He has admitted that he is in the wrong, and I told him I do not want a future of these threats and manipulation. But I have to admit, I've been feeling anxious and more nervous about our approaching wedding date. That is not going to change anytime soon. Of course, he needs to be able to regulate and control his fucking emotions. You're a grown-ass man, but that is... I know a lot of people like that, like trying to cut deep mm. in the heat of the moment where anger takes over, you're trying to take the biggest cut you could possibly do. That's going to take so much time for him 
to, to fix work that? I don't know. I think, yeah, no, because I do think <clears throat> in when we started having fights, like bigger fights when, you know, like just from maturing, living together, working together, whatever we did similar to the first question that we talked about, or one of the earlier questions set boundaries and rules about how to fight. Like we're not going to use the word divorce unless if you truly mean it and you say it in a fight, then it's going to be taken seriously. So don't say it unless you actually truly want a divorce, you know? So it's taking the D word off the table, not cursing each other out and saying, fuck you. And it's, and it's learning, but I'm saying like, it's setting those boundaries around. I've never said that. Okay. Okay. So I don't remember <laughs> saying that, but I think you set these boundaries around how to argue because it's, it's going to happen. You're going to argue in relationships, but you can't be giving these threats every single time because I think you, you have the right then to be like, how am I supposed to trust you? Like, is this what you really want? Those type of people are the same ones that are like, oh yeah, well, I'm glad your mother died. <laughs> you know, like people saying those fucked, fucked up, up things, things just because it's not about winning and losing. And just because you're hurt doesn't mean you have to hurt the other person. And in the heat of the moment, you do need to regulate your fucking emotions. It doesn't mean... Think about this. You get married to him. You're more intertwined. You have kids. What if his kid fucking infuriates him? He gets in a fight with the kid. What's he going to say to the kid? You know, it's all about regulating your emotions. He doesn't know how to fucking do that. And those are things too that you can apologize for once, but when they continuously happen and it's a pattern, you're like, okay, boy who cried wolf. Like how many fucking times are you going to say to give the ring back? And I'm supposed to believe that you are just kidding. It's not fair to it's you. It's very toxic too. I, I'm not saying leave him, but I will let you know him you better be prepared for a very long haul with this because it is going to take a while. If he does actually go through the proper channels to get help and, and do that, like to speak to someone to help give him tools on how to regulate his emotions. But that's not going to happen anytime. I mean, soon. I'm not a fan of ultimatums, but I do think that you can say, Hey, the next time this happens in I, a fight, this is a perfect situation for an ultimatum. He's right. already done it to you multiple times. Those are huge accusations. It'd be like, Give me the ring back. Let's get a divorce. That's crazy. Yeah. And that's what I mean. Like, those are not things to be taken lightly. No. And he has to understand that. So I think having that conversation and saying, like... Oh, I I'm sure he does. After the, after the fight, and then she's like... And then he goes to apologize. I'm sure he's like, oh, my God, I love you so much. I never... I'm so sorry. Like, that manic behavior... Well, it's emotionally manipulative. It's not... I don't know if that's manic behavior. You know what I mean. Like, it's so, like one side to the other, mm -hmm. which seems like a manic trait to have. Yeah. It's a different form of emotional. I mean, it's a different form of abuse. It's emotional abuse. It's not physical, but it's like <clears throat> he's retracting everything that he's saying because now he's afraid of losing you. It's like immediate regret, but yeah, you need to set those boundaries. And then if he crosses them, stick to your guns there. But shall we say it? Best of luck. Best of luck. Next question. Such a pussy move. I hate that. Years ago, when I was on dating apps, I came across my cousin's husband's dating profile. It stated in his bio that he was married, but he was looking for some excitement. I immediately took a screenshot, but froze up on the next step. I did not know if I should confront him or if I should go to her with this information. Ultimately, I ended up going to her because I'm closer with her. She immediately called him and he denied everything and she believed him without question. He said a group of buddies across the state tried to jokingly set up a profile for him. The only thing I did not get in the screenshot was the evidence of his location, which was his township, not across the state. Years later, they're still married, but it sits in the back of my mind every time I see him at family events. I do think I scared him shitless by almost getting him caught so he would never do it again, but the phrase, once a cheater, always a cheater, likes to flutter across my mind. My cousin doesn't know how dating apps work. She's never used one, and I'm wondering if he took advantage of that. Did I go to the right person? If you found a family member's spouse on a dating app, who would you have gone to with this information? I think you went to the right person, it's on her to either Your believe or not. Your conscience should be Clear. cleared. Cleaned? Cleared. Clear. Cleaned. Because yeah. you do what you're supposed to do, and then she can do what she wants with that information. There's nothing else that you could do here except wait, you know, and maybe they had some agreement behind closed doors, but that's not to oh, your that's knowledge. True too, yeah. You don't know. And so, but you <clears throat> presented her with the information. 
they can do with that as they will. There's nothing left for you to do. So I think, I think you did on, the right thing. Are they still on like speaking terms, I guess? <laughs> yeah, I guess he's so still awkward. around. Yeah. But he he might still be acting a fool behind closed doors. But unless you have more evidence where it's not it's not on you to do that digging, it's on her. And I'm sure that's not people the first so, red flag in her life with him. But people are so naive and they just want to hold on. Mm-hmm. Just hold on. Well, because you're scared just, of being alone. Because they're comfortable in relationships. So people would rather stay in situations that they know aren't right and just be in Delulu land and they're like, but it's fine. I'm gonna write off all not, of these red it's flags. Not that, but it's not that simple. It's not that easy. Shut up. Yeah. And then you're be your own person. And then you're divorced. Seriously, be your At own the per- end of life. And- be your own person. It's your life. Take I, control of it. I think people sometimes need to take their stories or their situations, flip it and be like, if my <clears throat> friend was telling me this, what advice would I give this friend? Take yourself out of the equation. Because sometimes I'll we'll do that with our friends and I'll repeat the story back to them. I'll be like, so this is what I'm dealing with. What would you do? You know? But people don't do that. Anyways, then you know, fucking stay miserable. But you did the right thing. Yeah, and you, now you did. You're fine. Pop your popcorn, because I mean, I feel like it's just a matter of time, or it's not. Get your I told you so card out. You did the right thing. Next question. I have a friend who I've been with for ten years. I've always been honest about how I don't want kids, and that I don't like hanging out with other people's kids. Even going as far as joking with my friends about how, when they do have kids, not to invite me to their birthday parties. Before you think I'm a total asshole, my friends all seem to be on the same page, and this friend in particular seemed to relate to me the most about it. Fast forward a few years, and she gets pregnant. I love her daughter, and for the first year of her life, I watched her every Friday while her mom went to work, but I still feel the same about kids' birthday parties. This friend moved two hours away, and every year she invites me to her daughter's birthday party, which always puts me in an awkward spot. I work weekends and don't get PTO, and I really don't want to take a day off and drive two hours away to go to a four-year-old's birthday party with a bunch of people I don't know and their kids. It'd be one thing if I had kids myself, but I don't. I don't know how to tell her I don't want to come. I usually make an excuse, but she always seems upset about it. Am I the asshole... Am I the asshole for not wanting to go or is she unreasonable to ask me to take the time off her child's birthday party? No, you're not unreasonable. I I mean, I wouldn't look at her like she's a problem either. Just be like, honestly, it's just like not really for me. I agree because I I think she's inviting you out of just courtesy and friendship. But I I also like, I'm like, that's one thing I'm not looking forward to as a soon to be parent. Like I'm hoping to like our own kid. Like I don't like other people's kids. (laughs) So (laughs) I don't want to be around strangers, heathens. Strangers, (sighs) heathens. Like, some some parents don't know how to lock up their kids and whatever. It's fine. Like they get it at four lock years old. Lock up their kids. Meaning like give a disclaimer here before anyone <laughs> thinks you're about to be an abusive whatever. parent. Whatever. I get it though. Like I I'm not a parent yet, but like I can only imagine. I'm gonna eat my words <laughs> in a few months slash years. But like I can imagine if you don't want kids at all, you are you don't have to go to these things. Send a gift. No, you're not obligated to no. do anything. Don't even send a gift. Just be like, nah, yeah. honestly, that's not really my thing. Right, exactly. And just be like, again, have fun. This gift giving culture, I'll say it again. <laughs> for, I just hate it. For the what'd you get me for Memorial Day, John? Nothing. I know, I know. exactly. <laughs> Can we stop giving gifts? You don't have to get anyone anything for just Memorial in general, Day. Why do we have to get Buy your own fucking gift. You work hard enough, you can buy whatever you want yourself. The one thing that I do feel passionate about is the friends who don't get married or have kids. It's like, we they need to be celebrated too. You <clears throat> ha- are celebrating your kids. You no, have 18, that's true. 18 gender reveals for child fucking four. That's crazy. And it's like, okay, and your one friend is who's working on their career is still going like, we need, we need to celebrate those friends people more maybe we need to make a national holiday for them because it's like how they're not the high maintenance ones no. asking for a bunch of shit and they're consistently showing up and sometimes they're not they want to do their own thing but like watching your daughter every friday that's a big task I mean, we're even talking about our own like baby shower like do we even want, <laughs> want one? one no i don't i don't i also just hate asking people for things and like don't well we don't them. we're not we don't want anything from anyone so no. we're just gonna like do our own thing but 
I don't know. I just think whatever. That's a conver- a different type of conversation. But you're justified in not wanting to go to these. I don't think your friend is mo- being malicious though, and asking you and be- expecting you to be there. I think it's like, or she could be. You are my best friend. I have a daughter. Of course, I'm going to invite you to my daughter's birthday party. But you have every right to say like, kids' birthday parties aren't my thing. Also, your best friend should <clears throat> understand that too. Be like, ah, that's true. Yeah. Like, I know you so well. I know. I knew you'd like say no. You enjoy one-on-one time with her daughter, so n- maybe celebrate her later. But you're not the asshole, and it's no. not un, you know, and she's not unreasonable for inviting you. But next question. Y'all used to be in the wedding industry, so I couldn't ask for advice from better people for this. My spouse and I got married in late September. We got some sneak peek photos slash media fairly quickly after the wedding, but it's almost June and we still haven't gotten our wedding photos. When I reached out to the photographer for an estimated time for the remaining pictures, the response I got was that they've been struggling and experiencing some personal issues and health concerns so that they were unsure when I would be able to get my pictures back as they didn't want to rush them. They continue to book events and shoots and provide deliverables. They look fine and seem okay on social media, but I know social media is only half of the picture of people's lives, but I can't help but feel like I'm getting shafted. I'm empathetic to people who are going through hard seasons, but I paid in full for this product last year. And every time I see more work on social media, I get more frustrated waiting on my wedding photos. I want to say I paid for my product. That's well past your contracted delivery date, regardless of your personal issues. I need my pictures now. Am I the asshole? I think my sister waited like a year for her yeah. wedding photos. If it's they in the contract, should that- give your photos for a discount or they need a they need to give you some sort of compensation. If in the contract it said up to a year, you have a year. But <clears> if they but if they're already past that, you have every right because what is it? September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, nine months. That is a baby. Like that is a full baby. That's insane. I mean, I get that. What does the contract say? It doesn't say it. She didn't say that. No, she didn't say, but it was past the contract. Oh, then- so yeah, I think again, you can be empathetic, but to your point, you're seeing them take on more work, which means your empathetic. backlog is getting even longer. I think you have every right to, or at least just ask for the raws and be like, listen, I don't care if they're fully edited. Why are edited. you tiptoeing around it? I want to yeah. be empathetic at all. Be like, fuck you. You're yeah. still shooting. Mm-hmm. You're still doing other projects. My project should be a priority. How about you give me my photos? If you don't, I'm going to give you a horrible review on Yelp. I'm going to go to your website. I'll, you know, Whatever you want to do, because that is unfair that they're doing that. Yeah, I think there's just w- different ways of doing business and to each their own when it comes to how they deliver their product when they get around to it. For us, I always overestimated, told the client it was going to be four to five months, got it to them within two to three months and max it would be four if it was a super busy season but they didn't anticipate to get it past that timeline because backlog happens life happens i don't care we never had a problem once and photographers to do that like know your business outsource like you can outsource to another editor so many things you can do yeah but i I think you waiting they're looking at you what do they say the squeaky wheel gets the oil like you're not annoying them for it because like you're being very kind and empathetic annoy them for it Go to small claims court. Fuck them. I mean. That's so annoying. Yeah. That irks me. Your professional, I think your professional company, like do what you're obligated to do. I think it probably annoys <clears throat> us more because we sacrificed our mental health. Oh, like in order to reach those expectations for our clients. Like also these photographers, like we know so many, we worked with a girl who said she shot 150 weddings. Right. As a photographer in one season. Whether she outsourced those photos or not, she was still able to do all of those on time. I'm saying, like, there's just no excuse. It's unprofessional. Don't take on more than you can handle. You should get you should get fully compensated. Yeah. Well, I hope you get them soon, but congratulations oh, on your me. wedding. Yep. We also got married in September. Beautiful time of year. Congrats. Next question. Do you think you would be able to shoot a wedding? Like if if we did a wedding again, do you think you would be able to do it like smoothly? I I don't have nightmares anymore about wedding mishaps, but I have had like them sporadically because I used to think about like, oh my gosh, I didn't mic up the groom. The ceremony is starting. All the cameras aren't set out. I don't think that I would be able to do it because it's been so long. I would be rusty. So if someone asked and they were like, I'll pay you a million dollars to film my wedding, I'd be like, I can't do it because I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust 
that I could do a good job. I'd be like, you have to. It's like our stuff so dated. Else. I'm like, would it even work? When was the last time you like hooked up your lav mic? I don't know. Maybe when we filmed our short film. But no, to do we used to bo- oh yeah. But to do a a wedding, it's so live. It's so fast paced. Like I f- would feel rusty. So I don't. I'm not confident. I would not. I would not say yes to a wedding right now. If someone was like film a wedding for me, I'd. I'd when did we shoot it? The last wedding was two years. Three years ago? I don't know. We still get inquiries, though. People are like, film my wedding. I'm like, oh, no. you, don't want, you don't want us. <laughs> you don't want us. There's so many other people who are in it and happy to do it. If we were to do it now. And I, we've seen people like that we knew that are still doing it and they've grown and they're like, we give it. you recommendations for sure. Yeah, we have tons of recommendations. Yeah. Except for some reason, like we didn't work with that many planners. I'm like, I need planners and I can never think of planners. Anyways. No, whatever. I, in short, yeah. no, I wouldn't shoot a wedding. Next question. My boyfriend and I have been dating since middle school and we are now 24. He talks about us getting engaged and married and I would love for him to be that person, but sometimes I just get in my head. For example, sometimes I feel as though I'm dating a boy rather than a man. Growing up, my dad was a fix-it kind of guy, whether it be house-related, car, or yard work, but my boyfriend can barely build a damn bookshelf. I feel as if sometimes I'm the man of the relationship in those aspects, <laughs> but I don't exactly want to be. I was raised to be independent and do things myself, but sometimes I wish I could just let my feminine side out with him. I've expressed this to him, and he gets a little upset because he thinks I'm talking down on him and his masculinity. Moral of the story, I get nervous about getting married to a man like this because I'm not sure if he could provide for me in ways that I would like. Being together forever is one thing, but in the back of my head, I just can't shake this feeling that someone else is out there to give me that princess treatment. I was not spoiled as a child growing up, but it would be nice to not have to feel as if I need to do everything myself. Any advice or thoughts on maybe another way to bring this up? I do love this man, but marriage is real, and I don't want to, number one, end in divorce, and number two, get burnt out because I do double work. Any advice would be appreciated. If he can't, you know, if being handy is not his strong suit, is he doing something better in another way? Because I'm going to tell you right now, Alex is more handy than me. I hate it. I can't do a bookshelf unless but there's dr- straight directions me, from like, like Ikea. You, don't ask me. But like to me, I, before dating you used to look for those qualities in someone because that was my dad. He could fix a car. He built our house. Like those to <clears> me are stereotypical man qualities. But if your partner doesn't know how to do those things, they bring value in so many other parts of your life that I'm like, oh, either we learn to then do these things together or we outsource. Like we work hard enough to, my dad always said like there's two types of people. There's people who can do it themselves. They figure out to do, or they write a check. Yeah. And it's like, or you just, you do learn over time, like maybe doing it together. But I don't think that. And again, to each their own, if this is a deal breaker for you, but it doesn't have to be if your partner is bringing value to your relationship in other ways, because everyone has their strengths. I'm, I'm not going to ask you. I'm pretty sure you and I are working as hard as we are, so we don't have to do this stuff ourselves. True. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, we don't have time, but it, but sometimes it's just people's hobbies. It's like what they genuinely enjoy is put a, building put a furniture. Gun in my mouth. <laughs> but that's because it's not your you want to be on reality TV <laughs> and some other people want to build a nice bookshelf. So ever to each their own. What I think, would my hobby be? <laughs> Paintball. <laughs> I just think I can't even run. <laughs> you could, I just, I would be more concerned about your back. It is funny though. Yeah. Um, so I wonder if he is contributing in other ways. Yeah. Cause if he's not, then that's different, but you're not going to, you're not going to have it all. I mean, how many of us in our, my generation or even younger know how to do anything? Yeah. Well, that's why I feel like trades are going to come back. They because have to. They I have hope. to. Yeah. There's not enough. I mean, you make great money in them. My dad was a trade. Was Your dad basically was a trade. My mm-hmm. dad was an electrician. But I just, I don't know. I think you have to look at your relationship as a whole and understand that someone who might have those manly qualities, in quotes, might not be might not check the boxes in other aspects of your relationship you know are you willing to lose the whole man because of this this thing and you might be because your whole relationship m- might not be that great because you don't know that yeah like you said checking boxes like they might be mr fix it mm-hmm. but they have no fucking personality yeah or, like you know is the grass always greener sometimes it's greener where you water it you know yeah depends 
So that's that's it, John. That's all we got. That's all she wrote. Those are all the questions? Mm-hmm. That was 10 questions? We flew through them. That was 10 questions? Yeah. Wow. That I last, thought feeling terrible was going to make this feel way longer Last than week, we spent way too long on every single question. We didn't even do 10 questions last week because we spent 100 years on every question. Wow. Do you want me to read a secret? <clears throat> yeah. Every time I cut my daughter's finger... And toenails, I take the clippings and hold them in my hand, and the thought crosses my mind to plop them in my mouth and eat them. I've never done this, but why do I think this way? I'm so disgusted with myself, yet these thoughts continue to creep. That's weird because my intrinsic Ugh. thought is like, I grabbed a knife. I was like, what if I just dropped it from here onto Kobe's back? Oh my God. I know I thought that too, though. If I just like, you like, walk by someone, what if I just did a quick shank? But imagine like you did act on your impulsive thoughts like that. Oh my God. The amount of times you said, <laughs> What if I just stabbed you right now? Yeah. Because it, it's true. Like, Because it's like a place of power You're or literally something. walking past a risk every day. That's crazy. In the kitchen. All right. I'm going to read a review real quick. You guys rock. Five stars by Sass56978975. I was laughing so hard at the cooking class story. Flipping hilarious. <laughs> Love hearing about your lives and Kobe. Thanks for sharing with us and being real. Heart emoji. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. John also loves sharing that story, even though My it might nightmare. have been traumatic. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. Well, it's been real. Guys, like, subscribe, email, comment. We love you. If you want to email us, was that it? Did you have more things to say? I don't know. I forgot I was like, what your spiel is. I love you. Some of you. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to email us, you can reach us at hello, give it to me straight podcast.com. You can write an anonymous question in our show notes or the link in our bio. And you can follow us everywhere at give it to me straight podcast on the show, so, socials. And we'll see you next week. Ciao, ciao. ciao. Bye. Bye.